Welcome to today's video where we're going to be going over some music resources and specifically books that you can get that will help you learn how to discover some more music theory as well as some songwriting tips. And to get right into it, the first book we're going to go over is Contemporary Musicianship. This is a book by Jennifer Snodgrass and is intended for beginners to intermediate music theorists. I used this book from Theory 1 to Theory 3, Early Theory 3 in college, and it's a wonderful resource. It starts at the very beginning, so if you know absolutely nothing, that's perfectly okay, because it starts with the notes on the staff and the notes on a piano and how you can start to learn those aspects of music as well as start to incorporate it into your own songwriting. And one of my favorite things about this book is that it uses a lot of modern examples. Sometimes books can be bogged down by going over classical music, while contemporary musicianship uses a lot of examples from Queen, David Bowie, Adele, songs you've heard on the radio and are familiar with. And the benefit of hearing these concepts in context of modern songs is it makes it more applicable to your own songwriting and ways you can write your own music because it's not it's not stuff that was written 200 years ago it was written just the other day so to speak now this is a textbook so when you go on amazon if you were looking to buy it and as an aside these are not sponsored nobody t told me to make this video these are just books that i have used and have gotten through schooling and through just uh ones i wanted to get for my own benefit but this this first book is probably the most expensive. It's around $70 brand new on Amazon. You can find it cheaper used, of course. Don't let that it's a textbook fool you. I still use it to this day as a valuable resource that I can use to refresh my own topics, maybe learn uh, something that I wasn't quite familiar with or maybe something I had forgotten. It's very valuable to have around. So even if you are familiar with some of these ideas, it's a, a wonderful resource to have. So if that first book was beginner to intermediate skill level, this next book called Jazz Theory by Darius Tarafenko is more intermediate to advanced. Now it's called Jazz Theory, obviously it goes over a lot of jazz concepts, but don't let the word jazz scare you off or if you're not interested in playing jazz, don't let that turn you away from getting this book because it's incredible. The things that the author goes over in this book are vast. There's so many ways you can take a chord progression and expand it and change it. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about this book is that there's so many ways you can take a chord progression and alter it to where it's almost unrecognizable from what you originally started with. And the benefit of this is that let's say you listen to a song or go on the internet and find a chord progression you like, but you don't necessarily want to steal that progression or melody or what have you. The benefit of this book is that it will show you tons of ways that you can take a progression and change it and alter it to what you need. So you can take that chord progression you looked up on the internet and alter it to what you think sounds best and in a way that doesn't copy the original song. Of course, if you are looking to get into jazz, it's uh, it's one of the best resources you can get. There's so many concepts it goes over. There's so many solo ideas that it goes over. There's so many scales that it goes over that it's, it's almost infinite in the ways that it gives you to learn. So again, while it is a jazz theory book, a lot of the stuff is based in jazz. You can still apply these concepts to metal, to folk, to pop, to rock, to country, whatever you want to start to change your sound. Just because it says jazz doesn't mean it is specifically that genre. It just means that it's using concepts found in jazz that you can apply to different areas of music. Now, this book is around $40 to $50 on Amazon new. So again, you can find it much cheaper used. And even though it is written by a different author from the first one, I find that contemporary musicianship and jazz theory are a great combo to put together as a resource to have in your library. It feels that the first book goes right into, into the second book. Again, they're not written by the same author. It just It's just a natural progression that makes it really easy to go from one to the other if you need to refresh from the first one to the second one. Maybe there's a concept in the second book they're talking about. 
you can go back to the first book and it, it feels like just one big compendium. Now we're going to move away from textbooks and music theory lessons and go to more practical exercise books. And the first book we're going to look at is what's called a real book. Now real books are very beneficial if you have struggles in melody sight reading and chord sight reading. This is because the idea of a real book throws a bunch of standards into one book where it just shows the melody and chord chart. Now a standard is just a piece of music or a song that is very popular and is generally considered to be part of your repertoire if you are a musician playing out gigs and places like that. And a real book will have a vocal melody line that you can play on guitar, you can sing it, you can play it on piano, whatever your instrument of choice is, but it'll also have a lead sheet that you can play along with. And like I mentioned earlier, if you struggle with melody sight reading, you can start sight reading melodies, but if you need help with looking at lead sheets, it has the chords there that you can play it too. And this is beneficial for songwriting because if you ever wanted to know how a certain style of music is written, for example, I have the Dixieland book, I wanted to know how Dixieland is written and some of the changes, these books are perfect because you get literally hundreds of examples of Dixieland music and how it's written and you can start to incorporate that into your own stuff. This is also a benefit if you ever wanted to jam with a friend or start working in a band. Because it has the chord charts, one of you can play the chords, one of you can play the melody, and oftentimes the way these songs are laid out is that it'll be the melody, then it'll go to a second section, then it'll play a solo, and then it'll go back to the original melody. And it's a great way to start to get familiar with the form of either Dixieland or jazz or rock or pop, or whatever kind of real book you get. It helps you start to understand that frame of mind in that genre, and it's so helpful as an exercise tool that I can't recommend these enough. Now the price of these range from about $20 to $30 new. That is for a physical copy. I know Amazon has Kindle ones you can get for about half the price, so if that's something you're interested, you can do that. They are a valuable exercise tool, so maybe if you feel like you are pretty good in theory and, and learning your way, but you need some more practice chops, get yourself a real book and start sight reading these songs and, and you'll be uh, improving in no time. And the final resource we're gonna look at is similar to a real book in that it is examples of practical music that you can use in your practice sessions to better help things like sight reading, but it is a piano sheet music book. And these are great because they are based on popular movies. They show the themes of the movie in piano form. And what's great about these is if you are already familiar with the movie, obviously you probably would be if you're getting the book, they have the themes there so you already know what they sound like. So when you practice it, you can already tell what sounds wrong or what sounds right when you play it. Sometimes in real books, you don't necessarily know what the song sounds like, so you aren't necessarily sure if you're playing it correctly. Well, if you get these piano sheet music books, you probably are familiar enough with the song to know if you're playing it correctly or not. And that can definitely help you in your sight reading because you're already be able to tell by your ear what notes are wrong and what notes are right. And while I generally refer to these as piano sheet music books, they also have the guitar chord charts along with them. And you can always tell which books have the guitar chord charts because at the top, it'll say piano, vocal, guitar. And there's a ton of these, you know, La La Land isn't necessarily a guitar based soundtrack, but it has the chords there. So if guitar is your main instrument, you can still play along. And these are exact transcriptions of the movies. They are most importantly correct. Sometimes when you go on the internet, there will be incorrect tabs or chord charts. These are by Hal Leonard, they are a reputable company, so you know these are 100% correct. And that also means you can play along to the track. Maybe if you're pretty familiar enough with the music that you can play along with it, throw on the music track itself and you can and you can have some real fun. You can work on your soloing this way and there's, there's just numerous benefits. If you are a vocalist, it has the vocal melody that you can play it, it shows the range, it shows the tempo, it shows the style. So even if you didn't have access to the music with you right at that moment, you can still play it and mimic the song very closely. And as I showed in La La Land, that was a vocal piano guitar book. Another one, like for example, my Black Panther book, 
that says piano solo in the top. That just means it is only piano. There are no chord charts in it. So if you are just a pianist and you just want to play along with a soundtrack, you can do that. That is what a piano solo book is for. And to be honest, when I first started looking at these books, I was disappointed that not all of them had guitar chord charts in them. And then I started to realize you can use it as an exercise tool because if you are interested in how chords are made and how different chords get a sound, you can go through the sheet music and figure out which notes are in the chord and find out what chord they're playing by yourself. Now this might sound really tedious and boring, but I can't tell you how beneficial this is in your own songwriting. If you ever wanted to know why Black Panther has a certain sound and how the score gets that very iconic Oscar winning sound, well, you can go through the sheet music and pick out the notes and find out why the notes work together and which notes work together. And then you can start to incorporate that stuff into your own music and you can use it as your own exercise tool. And again, that's just for the books that say piano solo. Other ones will say vocal, piano, guitar on them. And that's all we have for today. I hope this video helps you in your songwriting process. And thank you for watching.